couple of the questions I get a lot deal with post-processing, your editing. Uh, and what are they? Basically, it's always like, what is contrast? What's saturation? How does clarity work? What's the difference between sharpness? Well, I'm here to break each down in a quick, fun, and informative video. It came out really well. Uh, and basically show you examples of each, how it works, give you the quick thing about them, and it should really help you out. So that way, when you're going to edit, you know what they are. Once again, I know this is more for the beginners, or basically if you maybe want a fresher, not necessarily, you know, a seasoned pro or, you know, professional retouchers, but yet again, you know, that's who this is for. All right, so I, I picked this image here for a lot of reasons. Uh, and first of all, it is a mess up shot, so don't expect um, a lot from this, but I mainly chose this for demonstration purposes for all of these things because it has uh, pretty good colors that can pop and the eyes are even out of focus. Once again, that's why it's a test shot. Contrast, so you know, you would notice if you if you mess with the slider, you're like, oh, the, it's getting lighter, it's getting darker, uh, etc. But what the heck exactly does it do? Well, it's exactly that, you know, especially pay attention, we'll zoom in a little bit too. It lightens the lights so you see the white gets a little lighter and it darkens the dark so check out the hat or anything up here you see it's getting darker the trees even show it as well and mind you if i was really doing this i would you know get rid of all this stuff too what is this really really helpful for basically as i said it gives it that pop it gives it that punch that you really want to need for your photo so you make it pop it's great for black and whites uh, and everything like that distance between your lights and your darks so that's really what you're controlling here you're giving it that oomph you're giving it that intensity uh, to make an image pop. Now, would you use low contrast or high contrast? What's the difference? Well, as I said, I'll show you. So the image starts out about here because I shoot raw, so it's right out of camera. This is a less contrasty, low contrasty image. It's that dull, muted, semi-toned, but it doesn't look good with the skin. It's that angelic, uh, soft, hazy look. It really comes down to personal preference. If that's what you want to go for, that's fine. But once again, you got to be careful with it. But if you want to up it a little bit, boom, what you see, you can go too far to where it doesn't look good. Um, but just a nice, subtle little pop to bring out the darks a little bit uh, to, uh, you know, lighten the lights a little bit. It's perfect. As I said, it adds some punch. It's a more saturated type of tone. So you heard me mention saturation. Obviously, that's another tool that a lot of people use and they go nuts over it. They're like, this is great, right? No, it looks horrible. Basically, saturation is your overall color scheme. What you can do is you can use it to uh, enrich in the colors, brighten them a little bit. You can bring out specific colors. Uh, and that way, in Photoshop or Lightroom, you can go into your specific colors and you could choose to you know, make the oranges darker or something like that. I'll jump into that in a second. But yeah, you want to, this is where you want to, it's your color scheme of your whole image. Uh, you can make something mute tone by, um, here I go, I'll add some punch to it. You know, this is where you do your mute toned images where you can see a little bit of something. You can make it fully black and white if you need. Say if a color is too dominant uh, and you want to get rid of it. Say if there's, <laughs> this, Donnie's going to hate me for this. Uh, obviously, this is where it is. He doesn't have any of that. But say he's got a lot of red or red skin or something like that and just something doesn't look right or there's like a red tone on there. You could specifically go in uh, if you don't know how to do that or you could... You could drop it and make it more or less saturated, or you could actually go into each specific color and, you know, lessen it there. As I said, you know, it's, yeah, sorry, Don. It's your overall color scheme. You know, say if there's a green, a green tint to it or something like that, you do have a tint slider and everything like that, but you can go in and say, you know what, I don't want to touch anything else. I don't like the way this looks, but I like the way this looks. I just want the oranges and it will grab the oranges and the bricks in the shirt and say, you know what? I don't like the green back there. So what will that do? It gets rid of the green, something like that. So you're brightening your, your specific colors. You're lessening a more control over the color scheme of your photos. Clarity, and this is a tool that a lot of people love to use, but it can be way, way, way overdone. It basically, it changes the saturation a little bit as well. Think of it as a subtle, satu uh, subtle saturation. Say that very fastly. Uh, it's something very, very discreet. It's not as huge. It's no overkill. But as I said, you can go overkill if you do it in a way. So it's kind of a light saturation and you're really incre you know, increasing the midtones and everything like that. Um, they become way more distinct. So what do I mean? As I said here, let's just zoom in here. And even uh, pay attention to the histograms, you'll see it move. Once again, it's a whole nother video. So I'm gonna grab the clarity here and you'll see, you see how the oranges pop a little more? Let's go in a little closer. The oranges get a little more distinct. They get a little more brought out as you see. Um, I mean, it's just obvious. Or you go down, it lightens them, everything like that. And that's another huge thing we'll get into. You can absolutely make an image look horrible if you go too far and you don't like the way you go. I normally don't bring back clarity a lot. 
I usually add it a little bit, just make something stand out, boom, done. You can do something like this where people do and never do this. And don't do this. Because it really brings out the mid-tones. It really goes around the edges and finds them. And it looks horrible. The color changes and it just, nah. No good, no bueno. That's clarity. It, it really brings out to find your mid-tones. And um, it changes your saturation a little bit. This is where I'm like, well, what's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference? Well, sharpening really doesn't have effect on any kind of saturation. Or really doesn't change the color scheme at all. It really just grabs detail and everything like that. It grabs this neighboring pixel and basically helps it become a little more sharp. Uh, this won't be the greatest uh, form here, but I'll show you what a lot of people love to do uh, with high pass filters and everything like that. Um, I'm gonna have to get really really close. This is kind of where it's at with none. It's it looks a little a little blurry as I said This is where it's out of focus. We'll even focus more on the eye But you can go around and you see it's really trying to bring out each little pixel. I'll even go in uh, And it's trying to bring out the pixels next to it and trying to make it a little more defined a little more unique But as I said, it's not playing with colors at all. You don't see the, the histogram moving or anything people will use some form of uh, filters and everything like that to bring out more just basically detail and everything. So I'm gonna open this up. It's gonna open up as a JPEG. My screen never stays open. So what do they do? Well, they duplicate a layer. So that way you have a, basically a background uh, to mess up on. And they go to high pass. So now you're thinking of this and you're like, whoa, well, what happened to my image? Everything like that. This is where it finds detail, finds edges, and it will go around and you can choose the radius. So you can say basically how much you want something like this overkill you want something slight slight like around here just to find a little bit of the edges so here would be like no effect so you kind of go finds where it wraps around I'm gonna do a little more of a unique one a more just a dynamic one so you see uh, how it goes so you hit ok well what the hell now what what is this how is this sharpening yeah it looks there's edges and lines now what easy you go to your overlay so you go to your layers option your overlay and you're like, uh, well, that's fine, I guess. Well, what did I do? Look at that. It's slight detail. Once again, zoom in here. Kind of looks overdone. See, like, look at the skin and everything like that. Let's turn that off. You're like, well, that kind of blurred. It made it a little more sharp and made the eye sharpen. Actually, it didn't. As I said, let's, let's get in on that. It brings out detail, grabs the neighboring uh, pixels. But you're like, uh, well, you know what? I don't like that drastic of a look. All right, well, as I said, here's nothing, and you can create the intensity, the opacity. So you can go from zero, and you're like, oh, that brings out some detail. And you know what? As I said, it, it really all depends on what, you know, what look you want to go for. Uh, it really, really brings it out, and it brings out the entire image in a way, because you see the walls and everything. That's all we got. I really hope this quick demonstration kind of put it to an easy way, really laid it out the definition for you, you know, quickly, simple turns, not too technical jargon, and I gave you some good examples I think you guys can really uh, work with. So there's contrast, there's saturation, clarity, and sharpness. Eric Rossi, the guy with the eye, helping you out with some photo editing tips. As I said, if you like these, give this a quick thumbs up. This really, really helped you out. Let me know.